So wait, to yo mnes, I am Ruminous, and today we are going over manipulative mechanics in video games, which are things like upgrades, downgrades, customizable equipment, world changes, that kind of thing. Anything where there is an active or passive effect that the player or game can't do so on a whim or with a single button. The basic stats are an obvious one, but another manipulative mechanic is one such as in Resident Evil 4 with its adaptive difficulty, where the difficulty changes depending on how the player does throughout the game. This is also things like where the AI learns the patterns of the player, where the player can permanently change parts of the game, where the game can help or harm the player at various points. What makes this a mechanic instead of a direct control is exactly that. It is not a gameplay aspect because you don't have direct control. You don't do this with a single button. You may have sliders, you may have options, you may have certain things you can do in a menu, but you have to pause the game to make it do that. You can't just do this immediately. The player cannot press a button to change the stats, but has to change equipment to buy upgrades, which means at the very least pausing the game and going to the menu, so that's a good example. Manipulative mechanics are designed to help improve the fun of the game. If a game is too easy, the game will change the stats of the enemies, or the amount of resources, or whatever, to make the game more challenging. If a game is too difficult, the game may give more resources, make the AI less intense, or whatever, to give the player a bit of an edge. Manipulative mechanics can change frequently throughout the game, compared to assistive and detrimental mechanics, which are always active and are never changed. Manipulative mechanics can thus be helpful or harmful, but they can change throughout the game. Alien Isolation has a great manipulative mechanic for a horror game where the AI learns from the player. If the player tends to hide under the beds all the time and the vain hope to transform into a scary monster under the bed, then the alien will begin the search under the beds to show who the real monster is, which can be both detrimental, taking your favorite hidey spots, and assistive, where the player can actually lure the creature into these spots if they recognize that this mechanic is in the game. Super Mario Kart and Crash Team Racing use a mechanic where the more powerful items are given to the characters in the back of the race to prevent a positive feedback loop for the players at the head, where they obviously would get the more powerful items and stay atop because nothing can beat them. The original Crash Bandicoot trilogy would give a mask or extra life if the player died at the same place for about 5-7 to seven times, but then would also transform one of the boxes into a new checkpoint if the player continued to die in the level too many times. These mechanics change the way the gameplay is done, often to challenge the player or to help them finish the game. Developers realize that the skills and also willpower of players are diverse. Some players will need extra help to finish the segment, but others will need none at all. Not all games need manipulative mechanics, since the game is designed to be a certain way, or changing certain parts of a game will have minimal or drastic effects. Games without combat or tense situations tend to not have manipulative mechanics because there is really nothing to manipulate. However, a game like Gone Home has a manipulative mechanic of being able to open hidden doors in new games if the player knows that it's there. Gone Home hides the prompt for revealing the hidden door until a certain trigger, but the game always allows for returning players to activate it anyway and skip the unnecessary discovery for something that they already know is there. A player's manipulative mechanics are often very clearly stated in the stats for the enemies in the player, the equipment, and the permanent changes to the world or actions. These will need little explanation as they've been in board games for decades like Monopoly with the hotels and houses on the properties. Permanent changes in games are usually less ubiquitous, but they still appear in some games. These can be options like infinite ammunition, god mode, smaller enemies, and so on. Mega Man Zero One makes the changes permanent with the Cyber Elves, like transforming all the spikes into safe land, and these changes cannot be reverted at any time. Alright, so we got this ugly monstrosity, and then we got this nice white one. So it's white or black? I like the light. Let's go with the white one. Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 has optional costumes that are permanent for the level, but are able to be reverted when the player starts a new mission. Each of these types has their benefit, but having the ability to revert is almost always better because it gives the player the choice to have the world back to its original form without starting a new game. Other manipulative mechanics for the player include difficulty, morality choices, party members, new abilities, and the options to save or load. Oh, my back! My favorite spine! Besides general stats, the game's manipulative mechanics are generally more hidden and normally less fact and more speculation. Usually a game will tell the more important mechanics, like enemy stats or world changes that the game makes, 
but the more intuitive actions like adaptive AI will be hidden from the player. Resident Evil 3's nemesis will chase the player through doors into different areas, although he will eventually give up if the player runs away far enough and give the player a chance to breathe. The game recognizes that you don't want to fight him, so it will let you go on your own way. Lisa the Painful has many manipulatives, but the most important for the game includes the death of party members or permanent removal of limbs. The game will have options where the player has to choose between permanently losing a limb, which obviously diminishes the character's power or ability to battle, or losing something else. Manipulative mechanics for games also include things like altering the placement of enemies, removing tutorials, changing the amount of money or resources from enemies, and changing the opinions of NPCs to the player character. N++, in contrast, has different types of multiple manipulatives for the player which directly change how the game operates. The player needs to complete a set of 5 platforming levels within 90 seconds, and the time is only counted when the player actually completes the level. But the player can also collect gold to increase the time available, although most sets are designed to be able to be completed in 90 seconds so you don't actually have to get any of the gold. The player can also activate traps and seals which block sections of the level, seal gold away, or seal enemies into a region. Sometimes the player must activate these items, but normally they are optional, nor are they always available in every level. Outside of the gameplay itself, the player also has the option to choose the music or color of the world between levels, which is a nice manipulation, but what the hell is this color scheme? Manipulatives can thus be helpful in creating different difficulties without having an easy, medium, or hard choice. These manipulations can also have their own consequences, like limiting rewards or experience, impelling the player to try harder or not give up, but not locking people out of the game for struggling or speeding through. Manipulatives can also just be fun dressing to make the game a little more decorated or interesting on new playthroughs. These help keep the player engaged with a unique or changed experience in how the game reacts to them, or how they can change the world and encourages replays by making the world a bit more fun with the wacky abilities. Since manipulatives are so varied, some are implemented poorly, others are done well. There are probably games which have a cluster of poorly implemented manipulative mechanics, but I couldn't really find one in the many games that I played. Instead, I will focus on two games and specific mechanics that fail or succeed, and explain why they failed or succeeded. Dragons breathing fire in the sky. Why did you run Vampires so aggressively towards me? I know the dragon's about. I'm the Dragonborn. The, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim has a myriad of manipulative mechanics for the player and the game. Although, I'll just focus on the game side here. The enemies will level up alongside the player and different types of enemies hey, tend to appear at the higher levels. Yet, areas in the world lock into the level that the players first enter them. NPCs will comment on the player's deeds and powers in the world and will react when the player does crimes or violent acts. The enemies will flee or surrender when defeated, although some will fight to the death. NPCs will send hitmen after the player if the player has committed a horrendous act against them. What fails with Skyrim is the impact of these manipulatives as the NPCs indeed react to the player, but don't keep the reaction stable or permanent. Manipulatives should often be hidden. These mechanics make the game feel different and interrelated until the player realizes that they can just steal everything inside someone's house, sell it all, go to jail, serve time, and then go back to the house and the character doesn't act any differently. Part of what makes this fail is the lack of reliability in the mechanic. The player will kill hitmen who have been hired by an NPC, but the NPC will never mention it again or be afraid of the player whenever the player encounters them. Even though the game has plenty of mechanics that change over the course of the game, they ultimately have no lasting or personal effect. This, however, is often used in these larger games to prevent the game from breaking as important NPCs may be in jail because their neighbor stole a fork and murder was the obvious retribution. What did you expect me to do? He took my fork! Manipulative mechanics can just be cosmetic or temporary, but they should not appear to be more dramatic or intense than they are. Otherwise, the entire effect is lost and trust in the game is ruined, as I clearly can tell that you're pulling the strings to make it seem like it's more important. Guess it's all clear. Wait, I know you. <laughs> Undertale has many manipulative mechanics both for the player and the game. The player has the ability to level up and fight, and to talk and persuade enemies, and to use and give items. The player can change how the game operates by their behavior. If the player tends to kill, the NPCs will avoid and fear them. If the player avoids confrontation, future fights can be prevented or stopped more easily. The player can interact with many unnecessary NPCs, but those interactions have effects on the future game as well, sometimes big, sometimes small.
The end result of all these actions results in a diverse playthrough every time. Depending on what items the player gives or keeps, depending on how the player acts and fights, depending on where the player goes, changes the ultimate course of the game. Manipulative mechanics for Undertale focus more on the interaction and morality, but also do impact the difficulty of the game. Manipulative mechanics are a good way to make the game feel more alive and creating replayability by making the playthroughs less constant, but they come with the cost of more intense scrutiny of the effects of these mechanics. Ones making the game easier can simply spiral into no challenge or vice versa. Permanent changes can make the player feel annoyed that more was changed than was planned. Poorly implemented mechanics for manipulatives can make it clear that the game is all talk and no bark. Manipulatives can be a very useful tool, but need to be planned and designed properly. If the strings are shown in the manipulatives, players may abuse it for their advantage, or it can ruin immersion and or engagement. Thanks everybody for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and ring the bell to be notified of future videos. If you have any constructive criticism, things that you think that I missed, or games that exemplify good or bad manipulative mechanics, please put them in the comment section below so that we can continue this discourse. But until next time, where we will study assistive mechanics, Wale te omnes.